Welcome to Cardiac Surgery Simplified, a series where we discuss interesting cases and highlight key moments during surgical procedures. Presented by the Frankel Cardiovascular Center. Today's patient is a 64-year-old woman with severe mitral regurgitation, severe tricuspid regurgitation who presents in New York Heart Class 2. She has normal coronaries, normal LV function with an ejection fraction about 55%. Her mitral valve has been repaired and we're going to present the tricuspid valve repair. Remember, most of these patients have functional or secondary tricuspid regurgitation. Their left ventricle is dilated and the crescent of the right ventricle has been pulled open around the left ventricle, causing functional secondary tricuspid regurgitation. The indications for repair of this is, of course, moderate to severe tricuspid regurgitation or perhaps an annulus dilated greater than four centimeters. Our patient today has both increased tricuspid regurgitation and a large tricuspid annulus. We will uh, review the technical aspects of tricuspid valve repair, which are relatively straightforward for a functional repair. Basically applying the sutures around the tricuspid annulus, passing the sutures through the annuloplastid ring, and then tying down. This should be thought of as 10 stitches, 10 minutes, 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock on the clock face of the tricuspid ring as the patient faces the tricuspid annulus. And that way the AV node is avoided. This of course is the surgeon's greatest fear of doing a tricuspid valve repair is it will injure the AV node and the patient will require the pacemaker. So the rule of 10, 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock avoids the AV node. Her preoperative echo shows severe tricuspid regurgitation and a dilated annulus. The intraoperative picture confirms this, a dilated annulus with no anatomic pathology of the tricuspid valve. You can see the leaflets are relatively flimsy and normal. The septal leaflet is shown here, the anterior dominant leaflet is shown in a very dilated annulus. The operation has begun by placing sutures opposite to the coronary sinus anatomy, roughly at the six o'clock on the clock face. Surgeons should be aware, obviously, that the tricuspid annulus is somewhat more flimsy than the mitral annulus, and these stitches should run along and be almost uh, continuous. So there are no spaces in between the stitches themselves. The AV node is avoided by only running the stitches from 10 o'clock to about six o'clock. This is very easy to see how thin and flimsy the body of the tricuspid valve leaflets are. We then take these stitches and place them equidistance through the annuloplasty ring. In these patients with functional tricuspid regurgitation, a rigid tricuspid annuloplasty ring should be used. The annuloplasty ring is then brought down in contact the shaper holder is usually removed as the ring uh, retains its rigidity and the stitches are tied down. We routinely test the uh, tricuspid valve, although it is difficult to test the tricuspid valve, we just want to make sure that the uh, leaflets have not been caught on an annuloplasty stitch. Remember, the right ventricle in the tricuspid valve does not assume its normal geometry until the left ventricle is inflated, so it's almost always that we have to wait until the post-operative echo as seen here to see that we've done a good job. And you can see that there is no residual tricuspid regurgitation. So we have shown the repair of a functional tricuspid valve regurgitation situation. Thank you.